You're listening to the Holistic Health Front Podcast. Whether you've already taken steps towards a healthier life, or you're just starting to explore this path, this podcast aims to help all of us live longer and more energized lives. So we can all do the things we want and be the person we know we can be. We bring in functional health experts, parents, professionals, and everyday people who want to make positive changes in their lives. And we create powerful conversations about how to feel good and have fun, easy and understandable way so you can live the most fulfilling life possible enjoy today's discussion and let us hear your thoughts in our powerful people facebook group the information presented in this podcast is not meant to diagnose treat cure prevent or mitigate any disease if you have any questions about your health or the health of a loved one please consult your health care practitioner now let's begin Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Holistic Health Front Podcast. Uh, we're joined today. We've got Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, guys. How's it going? And we've got Courtney, whose video is frozen on my end right now. Courtney, can you hear us? Well, uh, I, I, she, she, uh, we were just talking before we jumped on how we're all tired, and Courtney's um, video is frozen with her eyes closed, so to me it looks <laughs> like she's uh, taking a little nap, but no, I know she's not. Yeah. You know, the internet's a little... Um, can be a little up and down on the islands there, but yeah, for sure. Welcome back, everybody, to the Holistic Health Front podcast. Uh, I'm excited to be back here. Uh, my name is Tyler. Uh, I've been away for a few weeks, and I know that I know that the rest, everybody else here, Stephanie, uh, Courtney, Shannon, Q. I, I I know Q joined the episode. Yeah, she, yeah, and then we lost her for the internet. I was so disappointed. I wanted to hear from her. Uh, okay, okay. So was she in the audience, or was she? Um, no, she was it, actually one of the hosts, and. Wow. Um, yeah, we were talking about different things. Oh, we mm -hmm. just lost Courtney. I wonder if she's going to try to dial back in. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Um, I'm yeah. sure she will. Oh, but, that's exciting. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool. I was. It was fun to have another face on there. You know, another uh, one of our health coaches was able to join us, and so that was fun. Um, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, her internet went crazy, and then we lost her. I was like, oh darn. So. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the game, right? You it can't, is. Like nothing's ever, and this is something that I've really taken like into every aspect of my life is just losing this expectation of perfection. Yes. I just feel so much more at peace and yeah. just okay with things. Yeah, me too. Knowing. Me mm -hmm. too. Yeah. I've changed so much since my youth. Everything had to be exactly <laughs> a certain way. And, you know, I think it was a fear that it represented me and who I was, which couldn't be mm -hmm. further from the truth. You know, life mm -hmm. is just full of messy little details that make us all unique. So I couldn't agree more. Hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. Even with this podcast, you know, I think about it, it's easy to get frozen, like this paralysis over perfection, mm -hmm. and thinking it's got to be this way, it's got to look yeah. this way, or you know, this is a, um, this is like a, like you said, a, a, a semblance of me in this world. Right. But the the truth is though that, and for podcasts especially, it's not about the perfection; it's about the consistency, right? and yeah. the intentionality behind it, right? We come into right. this with very good intentions and yeah, we bring uh, very specific experiences yeah. and knowledge, skill sets, everything yeah. to the table for these conversations. But the consistency is so amazing. And that's why I felt so good being out of town in a way for those few weeks, knowing yeah. that the team's still carrying the banner oh, yeah. forward, right? Oh yeah, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because the dynamic changes depending on who's on the call, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping Courtney's able to get back on. And if not, it'll just be Tyler and I tonight. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay too. I'm used mm -hmm. to it just being Tyler and I. And let me tell you why. My husband's name is Tyler and we've been married 30 mm -hmm. years. So, you know, me and Tyler, I mean, that's that's been the theme of my life for the last <laughs> 30, 35 years. Mm -hmm. So, um, but um what I was going to say is I was just having a conversation with my son and he was talking about some things going on in classes and just different friendships. And he was talking about how when we ruffle somebody's feathers, all of a sudden we try to, we try to make amends, right? So we, we, we go out of our way to start making sure that we're doing things that won't upset them or making sure that we omit things from our personality that do upset them. And we try really hard to, to make sure that we, those things that bother them, we don't ever do again. And what happens is the relationship doesn't get better. The situation doesn't get better. It gets worse because now you're being inauthentic. 
you know, you're worrying too much about how you're presenting yourself. And I think it's the same holds true for our po podcast. If we get too worried about perfection, then then we're not being authentic because, you know, like I said, we're all just here. And Courtney's back. Hi, sweetie. Yes. <laughs> hey, my, my internet just decided to take a break as soon as we started recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta yeah. love the timing. Yeah, but yeah. That's all right. We're talking. We're we're, we're talking about how um, just letting go of the expectation of perfection and being yeah. okay, rolling with these punches that come up in life, these waves of life. Um, it kind of creates beautiful opportunities, right? The yeah. fact that we're having this conversation right now is a result of your internet dropping. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, life is always giving us little gifts and little nudges to go into a certain direction, and and I think the more we trust yeah. that and follow it, go oh, with it with authenticity, absolutely. like you said. Yeah, um, right. I completely agree. And yeah. I don't know, I'm the the imperfection part. It just takes a load off my shoulders. Like, just get oh. it out. Say what you want to say. It doesn't have to be polished and refined and speak yeah. your truth and your tribe will hear you. And yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like I, so many things I've I've I have started because I'm like, OK, this isn't, it's not perfect, but, but here it is here. Here's my start and I can adjust it later, you know, yeah. and, and refine it. Like, let's just get the ball rolling and, yeah. and start. And I think when, when that happens, I, I the car red carpets rolled out, the universe responds to that and gives oh. you more opportunities. And Absolutely. So beautiful. Yeah. 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 It, yeah, it is. And it gives opportunity for evolution, right? Isn't evolution is such a beautiful thing to see. And, and evolution comes in a lot of different ways, right? We think about animals over generations, right. but also you think about the, the iPhone, right? The, I, what are we on the iPhone 15 now I that we never yeah. could have had that if it wasn't for the iPhone one. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and if somebody, sure. if some phone company released an iPhone one today, we're going to be like, what is this dinosaur? I, <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Know, but at so the bad. time, but at the time it was exactly what was needed in order to get to where we are today. Right. Yeah. And where we're going tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Absolutely. the same thing with everything, you know, just, I think for the people listening, we're talking in the context of a podcast, but whatever it is, like whatever it is that whether it's a hobby or a business idea or a trip that you want to go on. Um, I think that just going with the flow and, and, and take starting to take action on these things, yeah. putting it out into the universe is really the one true way to make it happen no matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right? One of my favorite sayings is that there's nothing more powerful than a decision. You know, when mm. we sit here worrying about this and worrying about that and worrying about this and we get, what we call analysis paralysis. But what happens is that's split energy. I'm an energy healer, so I'm gonna talk about energy, but that's split energy. You've got all of this powerful energy that's flowing through you and connected to the, you know, to universe, to God, to the community that's around us. But when you're split on all these different thoughts and all these different worries, then you water down your energy. But the second you make a decision, everything folds together and and all of a sudden it's like a you know drinking out of a water hose right all of a sudden that power of all of those split energies coming together to create one you know force to move forward it's it's shocking what'll happen once you make a decision make a decision to make, open your mouth make a decision you know to make a move whatever it is i always say the universe conspires in your favor you know once you make a decision and so Keep that in mind that, you know, when we're worrying too much about all the details and being perfectionistic, we split our energy instead of, you know, pulling it all together and moving forward with focus and attention and, and even a powerful force. I, I agree. And once you make the decision, then all of that worry and that indecision is gone and you can move on yeah. to the next step. Yes. To, to get more information, yeah. to get more input, to get more opportunities and, of course, make more decisions. But I think when you get practice making decisions, it becomes easier. It can be hard in the beginning, especially when, yeah, when it's when it's a big deal. I often rely on yeah. my gut. I will ask my belly, like, okay, is this good or bad? And if it's bad, it will tell me. And if it's good, I don't, I don't get much of a yeah. feeling. So I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what know, I, always... I much, I much more prefer, I much more prefer the um, feeling that comes with that moment where you're like, Oh, shoot, I did it wrong. And it's not, you know, <laughs> it, I, I much prefer that feeling over the just 
overwhelming fear and anxiety that comes with sitting in inaction and oh, trying yeah. to think of all the things that could go wrong and trying to preemptively uh, <laughs> prevent all that from happening yeah. by doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so much better to just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so much better whenever you just do something and you realize, ah, I did it wrong. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now I know, like, now I know, now I know yeah. what to do from here yeah. at least. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's no such thing as a wrong step. Everything mm. is a refining moment, right? Yeah. There's no such thing as a wrong mm. step. And I, I don't know if it's because we're bombarded with messages that look perfect, you know, from mm -hmm. social media, from commercials, from movies. Um, but yeah, we, we have to let go of calling when something doesn't work out. It's actually not a mistake. It's like a step forward in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you're getting involved in a relationship, you know, I always say, you'll know right away whether it's right or wrong for you. But until you take that step, you know, it's the same thing with a career move. Um, even on health journeys, everybody's like, I don't know what kind of exercise I want. I don't know what kind of food I want to eat. I don't know what, you know, and I'm like, you'll know immediately. You know, I have, I have clients that'll start an exercise routine and they're like, okay, I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to walk. And at the second morning, they're like, I hate being outside in the dark. I don't want to. I'm like, okay, that's not for you. Stay home and do 10 minutes of stretching and breathing. Hold your coffee cup and just relish in your coffee cup. Like maybe that's your morning routine, you know, instead of trying to think about the right way to do it. Everybody's mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. And, I'll, yeah. and also I think that we've got to learn to enjoy and have like love the process of experimenting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, because how, how would we know what it could possibly be if we don't try, right? Yeah. It's good to try something that we don't like because then we yeah. can figure out that we don't like it. Or maybe we get surprised and find out, hey, I actually, I do like it. I just thought it was something else. Right, right. Yeah. You know? Or mm -hmm. just because you don't like it the first time doesn't mean it won't get better, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. This episode is brought to you by oxygen and carbon dioxide. Breathe deep, breathe slow. Are you tired of nagging headaches, body pains, and feeling like you've been steamrolled by 2 p.m.? Want to feel more alive with a clearer mind, voice, and skin? Yep. And not to mention getting rid of that pesky BO when the deodorant starts to wear off? Ew. Introducing to you today, water. Did you know that 75% of American adults are chronically dehydrated? And did you know that majority of people who are dehydrated think that they actually are hydrated? That means most people are not drinking enough water. But if they did and they realized how much of a massive difference it makes in how they feel to be hydrated, they would realize that water can change their life. So drink more water. Aim for 96 fluid ounces per day minimum for adults. Side effects include peeing more often the first couple of weeks, but don't worry, it will slow down soon. I know I should really drink less caffeine. I just wish there was some way of getting energy in the morning without a coffee. Ah, the sun. Wait a minute. I feel good. Especially when I close my eyes and stare at the sun through my eyelids. Wow, this is great. I think I'm ready to crush this day now. Thanks, son. The Sun. Use it for free with care. Hey, y'all. Hope you've enjoyed these goofy little commercials. The information is all accurate and valid, so please use the tips we shared. Uh, even though we're having fun and being silly recording them, they're still 100% meant to support you and entertain you. We'll be getting back to the show in just a minute, but first, I want to really encourage you to join our free community on Facebook. It's called the Powerful People Community, and it's a place where you can interact with other listeners of the show, including me, our other coaches and co-hosts and everybody. And it's a place where you can ask questions publicly or anonymously. You can request episode topics, you can share your story, and celebrate with a group of really amazing people who will also be celebrating you. So we really hope to see you in the community. We think we're building something really special because we believe when you bring together a group of powerful people, there's just so many great things we can do in this world, more than we could do on our own. So we're building a special community and we hope to talk to you there soon. Now, let's get back to the show. I 
I, uh, this is a terrible analogy, but I'm going to use it anyway. Or actually, maybe it's a funny analogy. I remember when I was um, a little girl and I got my first kiss. I was 14 years old and I screwed the whole thing up, man. It, it was just bad and it was gross. And I never wanted to do that again because it was just awkward and it was yucky, man. But I'm telling you now, if you keep trying, you know, those kisses can can uh, become quite fun activity. But I, if I would have judged kissing from my first kiss, oh, yuck. I would not have done it again, you know, because you're, you're inexperienced and you don't, you know, you don't know. So, you know, I know everybody's going to laugh and when they think, you know, hear this, but really just because you do something that doesn't feel right the first time doesn't mean it's not right for you. So keep that in mind as well. For sure. For sure. This is great. This, uh, this conversation kicked off a lot more organically than I thought it would. <laughs> yeah. The plan coming into this episode, just for the people listening, the plan coming into this episode was just to be casual check-in and just talk because we didn't really have an, it an itinerary for this episode. Mm -hmm. um, we're all kind of coming off of a lot of stuff and we're all we feeling are. a little tired. So, yeah. but we, but we still want to be consistent and show up. Right. And, right. and that's a really important thing in life too, is just, you're not always going to bring 100% every day. And that's not the goal is to bring hundred percent every day. I was at a conference a couple of years ago with uh, Jeff Spencer and Jeff Spencer is an Olympic coach. Uh, he actually coached, um, he actually coached, uh, Lance Armstrong and he coached Tiger Woods and uh, different like high level athletes. And he's responsible for dozens of gold medals over time. And Je Jeff, very like amazing person, amazing guy. We call him uncle Jeff. Um, but the thing that he always talks about is that with all of his athletes, when they're training, they rarely ever go to hundred percent ever in their training, maybe like once or twice leading up to it. But the the goal is to be coming out with what you have that day and just be showing up and consistent and doing your exercise or doing your getting your reps in for the exercise reference here um and so yeah that's the other thing is that like i know sometimes we don't feel 100 percent and we don't feel like we can be a complete rock star today and that's totally okay like that's normal nobody it nobody ever is right mm -hmm. um but still show up and do the things that you commit to uh and and be surprised pleasantly surprised that like hey that went that didn't go as bad as i thought it would or mm -hmm. hey that went significantly better than i thought it would or hey that kind of sucked but whatever we did it so <laughs> that's good right right mm -hmm. right for sure well um, and giving 100 percent, 100 percent of the time is that's that's a you know that's a recipe for burnout you know mm -hmm. so um be okay being where you are, you know. Um, we tend to think we have to hide our flaws. When we all got on here, I will, I'll, everybody was like, whew, I'm kind of tired today. You mm -hmm. know, I just got back from taking care of my, um, I went down to Southern Illinois. It's a six hour drive, took care of my dad, saw some friends, which was fantastic. Um, but there's a lot of emotional drain that occurs. My father is in a nursing home and he's not doing well. He has good days and he has bad days um, and it can be kind of heartbreaking, you know, and, and whoo, you know, I care. You, you just carry that home with you. And then there's the worry of, you know, what's the next step? Are we doing the right thing and stuff? So, you know, all of us have our stuff. I know everybody was today before we even started recording. We're like, I'm kind of dragging ass today. <laughs> like, raise your hand if you're dragging ass today. I know I am. You know, and I know it's like, woo, I think we should start a dragging ass club, you know, like, you know, and, and that's okay. You know, um, it's okay. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to be worn out. And the great thing about it is when you're truthful about it, you can connect with the wonderful people like Tyler and Courtney and I, and we can all just agree. Yeah. And there's something about sharing that, that makes it better right guys like all yeah. of us saying yeah me too yeah yeah and so don't be afraid to say it out loud you know me too i'm tired so yeah. what's been going on tyler courtney tell us a little bit about you guys what's going on with you guys lately i'll go last because i think mine's kind of obvious but i have uh <laughs> some stuff that kind of came off that but yeah i'm curious like what's going on in everybody's lives right now um yeah life I, I know Stephanie, you shared that you just got back from that trip Mm -hmm. Life on the island has been is starting to wake up. 
Uh, restaurants are opening back up and we're getting ready for season. Um, I'm, uh, I just made some brand new business cards. I revamped them. Um, one for my Reiki business, yeah. one for my coaching business. And I'm super excited for them to arrive so I can start handing them out. And uh, yeah. instead of just talking to people, I can actually hand out my business cards and talk to people. So that's exciting. Great. Yeah. Um, I've been hiking a ton, snorkeling a ton, um, just really enjoying the beauty of this island to the point where I'm wearing myself out. And right. I, I don't mind being worn out because I'm just like physically active and just really enjoying. Um, it's like it's like the good tired, you know. Yeah, and that, that's, that's yeah. what's been going on. I've been enjoying enjoying life and getting getting ready for the season because we'll have tourists and I'll be busy with with some of that stuff too because I have a job at the apothecary downtown and we get a lot of we get a lot of people in the, in the high season so yeah. getting ready for that and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you know i I just assumed that when you're on an island, this is us getting to, you know getting to know each other. I just assumed it's in season all the time, you know, when, when, and it, I guess that's not the case, you know? So that's yeah. interesting for me that we're getting in season. Well, we slowed down because right now it's hurricane season and it's unpredictable. Oh, and it's okay. also hot, okay. hot, hot and humid and not everybody okay. likes that. I, I don't mind it. Um, I'd right. rather be hot and humid than cold and bones just yeah. freezing. Um, so it's kind of, it's nice because we don't, we, we get a rest. We don't have the, the influx of people here on the Island and it becomes our time. That's what we call it. You know, when there's nobody else oh, on the Oh, okay. Except maybe, maybe another local or two. And it's just the, the yeah. time for us to rest and relax and rejuvenate and really enjoy our Island before, um, oh, cool. before season starts. So yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. It's yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, what island are you on, Courtney? Oh, I'm on St. John in the United States Virgin Islands in the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful. How neat. Yeah. I love that you, I love that you um, know your body so well and, and listen to your body so well to know the difference between like good tired versus, okay, I really need to do something about this tired. Right. And because you know that difference you're able to distinguish like, no, I'm not burning out. I'm just tired because I'm physically act, <clears throat> physically active. Yeah. And for that reason, it's, you're not putting a suppressor on your enjoyment of your life, right? Like you're able to really appreciate this time and soak it up uh, and hopefully get a little bit of time before busy season really kicks off to get that rest and relaxation back in. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's really cool because I, I know, there's been points in my life where I've gotten confused between what kind of tired is this, where I felt like I would say no to things that would be exciting to me, thinking that I needed to rest mm -hmm. when it wasn't really that kind of rest that was needed. It was actually probably better for me to get out into nature and go for right. a walk and yeah. you know, do stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good point. Um, I'll share a little bit about what I'm doing. I am, we won't go into detail, but I've been um, recovering from adrenal fatigue from all of this stuff that happened with my family. I think I've talked about that in a couple of the other episodes. And what's interesting is that I'll have really good weeks and then I'll have down weeks and I'll have really good weeks and I'll have down weeks. And so I've been on this quest. I've been doing this for almost 20 years and I'm like, what am I missing? You know, what am I missing? I know about exercise. I know about meditation. I do yoga. I do yoga, you know, weekly. I work out with a personal trainer. I drink my water and eat my fruits and vegetables. And I'm just sharing my sharing this to say I've just discovered some stuff lately that's really made sense to me. I have I keep going, why do I have days where I feel well and then I crash, you know, and I feel like I'm back into that brain fog and that adrenal fatigue. And I'm like, wait a minute, I thought I was over this. And so and I'm, I'm 54 years old and I've just started going through menopause. So hot flashes and, you know, irregular sleep patterns and stuff like that have just started. And I'm like, wait a minute, how, how is this going on with me? Because I'm quote unquote, 
living a healthy life. Okay. And that's why I'm sharing this because if somebody like me can't feel good, then what the hell, right? Because, you know, you think you're crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's. And so I've been doing some research, reading a bunch of different books, and I've discovered something that made so much sense to me that said that by the time you get to a certain age, and, and it doesn't matter what that is, we get this toxic load from our world, right? Everything from the water that, you know, is chlorinated and oftentimes, you know, full of things that don't support us to the foods that we eat that are oftentimes non-organic and maybe sprayed with chemicals that don't support us. Even the air we breathe is full of exhaust fumes from, you know, just the industrialization and traffic and things like that. The cosmetics we put on our body, um, the stress we put ourselves through because we can create, you know, toxins in our body by pushing ourselves too hard. And this just made so sense, so much sense to me that once your body gets to a certain toxic load, that if you do something small to add on to that toxic load, it spills over and then your body can no longer handle those amount of toxins in your system. Your toxins get stored in body fat, in bone tissue, in brain tissue. This was just fascinating to me. And I was reading an article that said, if you're one of those people that like feels well for a while and then you crash and then you feel well for a while and crash. And I'm like, oh my God, that's me. Um, and I was trying to figure out what it is. And it's like, it's not, it might just be, I don't get a good night's sleep. And then the next day I'll be over foggy. Or maybe I eat something that triggers a digestive disturbances. Well, what happens is once you reach that toxic load, every little drop of something not right, all of a sudden gets spilled out and then the body can't handle it anymore. So I'm actually in the process of going through a four month, and it is four months, it's not something you can do very quickly, deep cellular detox, mm -hmm. where I'm actually using, I'm taking things away instead of adding things. I mean, in my world, I, I add vitamin D and I add more water and I add more meditation and I add more exercise and I add more walks in nature and all those things. You know, I've been adding, you know, for several years now trying to um, feel better. And what I've discovered is it's time to subtract that um, you get to a certain age and you have this toxic load. I mean, it can be from surgeries. It can be from vaccinations. It can be from medications. I mean, you know, you don't get to my age and not have experienced toxins, for, you know, just from living. So I'm actually in the middle of a four month deep cellular detox where you spend the first couple of uh, months, you know, preparing your detox organs. And then the second couple of months actually using substances that pull toxins out of the deep cellular places where they get stored. And I just wanted to share, it's been kind of mind blowing for me to see the difference in how I feel and to watch the process. So for if you're ever out there and you're wondering, what can I add to my life? And you keep adding and adding and adding and doing all the right things like I do. You might talk to a practitioner or a health coach or a functional medicine doctor about what you can do to do a deep cellular detox and actually start pulling things out of your body. I actually did a couple of tests through a functional medicine doctor and I have really high levels of certain toxins and I have a little bit of metal toxicity as too. And I'm like, I didn't know I had heavy metal toxicity. I don't know where I would have gotten it. I've never worked in an industrial place, but oftentimes it can come in, you know, maybe the water that you drank when you were a kid. You know, I grew up in an old, old home. Maybe there were things in my home, you know, growing up that I, that I absorbed that I didn't even realize. But I just wanted to share my story because what are we doing, you know, right now? Just wanted to say that's what I'm doing. I'm actually discovering I'm toxic, you guys. <laughs> you know, um, and it's actually been very freeing for me. I'm like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. And I'm only one month into a four month program, but I can already feel a difference with the brain fog, with the sleep, uh, with the hot flashes, uh, with s skin issues. Um, so anyway, it's been real interesting for me. So I just wanted to throw that out there. You wonder what I'm doing? I'm in the middle of becoming less toxic. And I would have never told you I was. I've been a health and wellness coach for 20 years. I eat clean. I, you know, drink all my water. I, I'm really conscious about my exercise and my routine and my meditation. So this, this is, if you're out there and you're one of those people that's tried everything and can't really, you know, move the needle, um, you might try considering that you might need to do a deep 
cellular detox. So just throwing that out there. Since we were saying what we're in the middle of, we di- I'm discovering, you know, for myself, and I'll be able to share that with my clients as well. Yeah. No, that's wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm curious though, what kind of things do you remove, right? As a healthy person. Right. So um, for me, I'm actually not. Uh, so I got a special um, filter for my shower because you absorb so much in a shower, right? I mean, the one thing about taking a shower or bath is that it absorbs through your skin and your skin is your largest organ of your body. And there's no filtration, right? I mean, if I'm eating something, it has to go through my liver and my kidneys and, you know, and my detox organs. Um, But if I'm in a shower, it just comes right in, right? And so there's oftentimes you can, you can get a lot of load just from taking a shower. So I put a special filter cost me $37. You know, this is an expensive stuff. Uh, I put a, put a special, um, sh- it, it attaches to your shower head. You don't have to, you know, do anything special. It's just a special filter that you attach to your shower head. That's one of the things that I'm doing to help remove the toxic load that I'm getting have you on noticed a daily the, basis. Uh, have you noticed the softer hair, softer skin? Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. It's a game changer, um, right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a game changer. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I take a shower, take a bath every day. So you don't think about how you're retoxifying mm-hmm. yourself every single day. For sure. Um, and really quick before you move off that, I just want to add that also when you're in the shower, right? If, especially if you take a hot shower, you're breathing that steam in too. Yes. And that's filled with, you know, that's going straight into your lungs. And you're opening up your pores, right? Mm-hmm. And you're because you're, you know, because of the hot, you're opening up your pores. And if your water supply, you know, I live in an agricultural area. I'm sure that mm-hmm. there's some runoff from, you know, the, where I live. Um, and I had already had a filter on my kitchen, right? Because, you know, the water that I cook with and mm-hmm. the water that I drink, I was being smart, guys. You know, I was doing, you know, the filter thing, but I hadn't even considered you know, how much you take in, you know, um, through a shower. But the other thing is, is I'm, I'm working, um, I'm using some specific um, protocols to actually pull toxins out of your system, you know, to actually, you know, and that, that requires working with somebody that knows what they're doing, by the way. I, I encourage you to reach out to a health coach, a functional medicine doctor. You know, I did a couple of tests, you know, to see where my, my levels were. It was really interesting to me um, that, you know, the things that I had going on in my body that I wouldn't even have told you I had going on in my body. Um, so, but anyway, yes, that's what I'm doing. As far as omitting other stuff, I mean, I already eat healthy. I already eat, you know, and 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 I already do exercise and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is, you know, just be aware of your environment. You know, mm-hmm. are you surrounding yourself by things that stress you out? If you can eliminate some of those things or get a break from a couple of those things, you know, that helps as well, you know, so. You can tell me if it's uh, personal, but uh, I'm just curious, like the, you said you're doing like certain protocols to help pull mm-hmm. some of the toxins out of the cells. Mm-hmm. Could you give a little, um, uh, just a little like insight as to kind of what that is or what? Sure. So I've read several books, you know, I, I did, I, I'm one of those, I've been doing this for 20 years and I, I go deep on research. You know, mm. when to make sure that we're doing the right thing, because whatever I learned for myself, I then share with my clients. I'm mm. always my first guinea pig. When I recommended mm. something, you know, I've done it, you know, um, or my family's done it. But um, so basically, there the, the, the first couple of months, you know, you want the first month, especially you want to make sure that your gut, your actual digestive tract is working well. So we're going to uh, we're going to take supplementation that's going to help eliminate parasites eliminate fungus, candida, uh, um, SIBO, small intestines, bacterial overgrowth, you know, so you're going to spend the first part making sure that you're taking supplements um, that pull that can actually, you know, kill the bad guys. You know, I call them the bad guys in your gut. So that's, you know, parasites, bacteria, fungus, candida. And then you spend the second part of that first month, then refortifying. And that's going to be your probiotics and your friendly bacteria and your greens and your enzymes and, you know, all this stuff to build a strong gut microbiome. Um, In the second month, you take all sorts of supplementations that specifically open up your detox pathways. Um, And so that's going to be working with your liver, working with your kidney. There's very specific detox pathways. And so you want to prepare your body and get those detox pathways open. 
Um, the third month involves actually pulling toxins out of the out of the body level. So that's getting into your fat tissue, bone tissue, different things like that. The safest place, I'm going to preface this by saying this, one of the safest places for the body to store toxins is in fat tissue because the body doesn't know what to do with it. It can't process it. You know, if you've got a heavy metal in your body, you're not using it for anything. And the body's not designed to break that down. You know, we weren't designed to process heavy metals, right? And so the body will figure out some way to store it so that it doesn't harm you. And it usually goes into fat tissue. And so, um, you know, that's another thing. I've been carrying about 25 pounds of extra weight that I've never carried in my life, you know. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, that's just a side note. But the third month involves taking supplementation. Now that you've got your detox pathways open, you take supplementation that literally pulls the toxins out of your body. And then you have to take another supplement that binds it and pulls it out through the digestive tract. Because if you start detoxing and you don't have the right binding unit to grab that toxin and escort it out of your body, you guys, you can get really sick, you know, because now you're exposing yourself to toxins, right? They're just floating around in your bloodstream. So make sure you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, and then in the fourth month, I will work on a supplementation that actually does the brain detox, because you want to make sure the body is clean first before you start pulling toxins out of the brain, because it's a, you know, it's a sensitive process and that body needs to be working optimally before we start to, to do that. And then that is a different supplement that actually pulls toxins out of the brain. And it made sense to me because I struggle, I, you know, all of a sudden I'm struggling with brain fog. I've never had brain fog. You guys, I don't, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't drink coffee. Like, I, you know what I mean? I, I, I sleep well. I'm like, how, why am I struggling with brain fog? So this makes sense to me when I had the test done that I have some heavy metal toxicity and some other toxic load that I didn't even know I had in my body. So that's what happens in the fourth month. And then, you know, from there you stabilize and, you know, you continue to pay attention to your environment. The lotions, I've changed all the lotions. I was already using natural lotions. I just went a step further and now I'm using organic natural lotions. Um, you know, paying attention to what you're putting on your body can make a huge difference as well. So we don't need to make this all about me. So we can switch gears, but um, you were asking, but that's basically, you know, the protocol. Cool. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I definitely love to stay updated on how that goes for yeah. you throughout and learning anything you learn through the experience. I think that's a really interesting thing. Yeah, I think a thanks. lot of people have detox on their minds, you know, well, it's a pretty I, common thing, right? When somebody's like, I want to be healthy. Yeah. And you always hear about the seven day detox or the 14 yeah. day detox. Tyler, I think it's a I, common yeah, thing well, that comes up for people. This is what's crazy, Tyler. I was diagnosed with cancer when I was 24. I'm 54 mm. now. So every year I have done an annual detox. Like mm. I, I've done, I've known about this since my cancer diagnosis all those years ago. And so I have been doing an annual detox, most of them 14 to 21 days. You know, I have spent my whole life paying attention to that. And so this is a different level. This isn't just, this is a whole, when I say deep cellular detox, this is completely different than any other detox that I've done. And I've done a detox every year of my life since I had cancer, because I have always thought to myself, got to keep my body clean. You know, I don't want to have to deal with cancer again. Um, and so that's why I'm sharing this because I have been paying attention to detoxification. I recommend it to my clients all the time. I do it myself once or twice a year, depending on how I'm feeling and what's going on. And that's not what this is. This is a deep cellular detox that goes quite, well, it's four months long. You know what I mean? It goes, it goes, on, a, it goes on a deeper cellular level. So I just wanted to share that just because I'm kind of, you know, here I am learning all sorts of new things. I'm like, wow, I had no idea. So. Um, yeah, yeah, it's thanks. interesting. I think it could be a cool idea too at some point for us to do um, like a group detox with the community. Right? I maybe love some, that idea. Right, something like that. I love could, that idea. Maybe it could be like a, like a live call that everybody gets on, like everybody signs up to get on a live call and we kind of talk through it and help everybody yeah. develop their own. Because not, not everybody needs the same detox program, oh, right? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Uh, but, yeah. And so maybe we can like do host something where everybody gets on a call live and we work together to help 
everybody feel more empowered to set their own detox thing and yes. then you can have an ongoing accountability for x amount of time yeah absolutely that could be cool that yeah. could be fun I like that. absolutely um, nice yeah awesome i'm so excited for this podcast to launch by the way um it's gonna and it's coming fast like we we mentioned i think we said december 3rd i have to look at my calendar again yeah um and once this launches like then the people listening to this episode you know reach out to us let us know if we yeah. bring up an idea because we're going to throw out ideas and say hey maybe we can do this maybe we can do this yeah ultimately the thing that's going to make us actually do it is if you the listener um reaches out to us and said hey love that idea i want that too let's do it yeah and yeah guarantee if a few people reach out to us and say that like we don't need a hundred people to reach out and say right. let's do it one or two people reach out saying let's do it we'll probably end up doing it yeah right? so if you've got a question uh, or a topic that's what that's what this is about you know is mm -hmm. having a community that we can all lift and support together mm -hmm. for sure yeah. yeah for sure and i think it's going to be more motivating for us as well right like we we've been motivating because we've been motivating each other to keep doing this podcast mm -hmm. but the moment that we're actually publishing the episodes and we realize like we we feel the fact that it's not just us having a conversation amongst ourselves we're inviting a lot of people in yeah. on this as well i think it's yeah. going to do wonders for us as well and we're going to fall in love with this process even more than we already have yeah uh, for it's sure. going to evolve just like we talked about in the beginning of the episode yeah yeah uh, so tyler mm -hmm. what have you been up to lately yes yeah so Please. just got <laughs> just got back from japan uh did three months or not three months did three weeks in japan and um it was, I mean, it's amazing. What, what an incredible example that Japan is for, I think for other countries and for people around the world, I, I highly recommend people to go visit, uh, at least go to Tokyo because I mean, it's the largest city in the world, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the Tokyo, uh, metropolitan area, mm -hmm. it, 43 million people. The last time I checked, Oh my 43 gosh, 43 million people. It's massive and it's huge. It's huge. But when you're there, it's so clean and it's so organized. Really? And the traffic isn't that bad. Really? And really? No, yeah. Like the traffic is nothing compared to Mexico City or New York City or Chicago or LA. Nothing like that. Wow. It's huh. clean, it's organized, it's quiet. And there's a lot of nature, like bees and birds and in the uh, middle of the city. Flowers and trees in the middle of the city. Yeah. Really? It's incredible. The largest city in the world. I think that Japan is just such a great example for people. And I wish that all of the US politicians would go to Japan and learn from the way that they reinvest in their cities and their people. Because uh, awesome. I think that there is something that we could all take from that. Absolutely. Um, you can clearly tell when you go visit there, you can clearly tell that this is one, one of the most rich, powerful countries in the world, mm -hmm. but two, one of the most rich and powerful companies, countries in the world that has invested in their people and in their country, uh, really sufficiently. Yeah. Um, I, not to get political, but you know, a lot of other really, you know, major powerful countries, get all that money uh they find ways to line their own pockets with it and then go reinvest it in things that aren't exactly beneficial for the people that are there right. living in that place no this yeah. place so clean um and i'll say also the food is incredible uh i really that's not one of the things that i was most looking forward to about going to japan because i'm not a big i don't like seafood that much i don't yeah. eat very much seafood yeah. And so I had it in my head of, oh, okay, well, yeah, the food, we'll see. We'll see how it's going to be. No, the food is amazing. Like it, it was incredibly delicious um, and very healthy when you order a meal there and, and also very cheap too. I mean, Mexico or J Japan is probably the cheapest country I've ever traveled to. And I live in Mexico. Really? Um, yes. Yeah. Easily, wow. easily, significantly less expensive than Mexico. How was it and navigating because of the language barrier? Actually, pretty easy. Um, it was pretty easy, uh, especially in the bigger cities like Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto. Mm -hmm. um, a, a good amount of people speak English. Mm -hmm. But also, I rented a translator for when I was there. So mm -hmm. a pocket translator that you can like just record yourself and then it'll 
immediately speak it to the person you're talking to and then they can record themselves and it speaks it back to me. Mm -hmm. We used it a few times, but we really didn't have to use it that often. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah. also Google Translate is just beautiful, like amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Google Translate has a, um, a function where you can use your camera and you can point your camera at, uh, say, like a menu is completely in Japanese. Yeah. yeah. And you can point your camera at it and it'll yeah. auto AI translate yeah. it to English or it's, whatever language you want. It's super cool. I used it when I was over in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. It's super yeah, cool. Right. Yeah. Super helpful. But I'll say this, that the meals, the foods there, um, when you go to a restaurant and you order a meal, a lot of restaurants that we went to, um, they give you like a full course meal, right? They give you your first thing and then your second plate mm -hmm. and then your third plate and then your whatever. Right. Um, they are just really well-rounded meals. Um, you're getting every meal that I had for the most part came with like some sort of fermented food that was delicious, by the way, a lot of people hear fermented and they think it was gross, but no right. delicious fermented foods, miso soup that's packed with probiotics, mm -hmm. uh, clean proteins, veggies. Um, they do a really good job of incorporating a really well balanced meal when you eat and it tastes amazing, insane. It's so delicious. Yeah. And you don't feel, that heavy feeling in your belly afterwards. You you eat your meal and you feel energized and you feel yeah. good and excited. Like you know, it's it's really it's really something. I think that they just do a wonderful job over there, and the people are, I mean, um, so friendly. I mean, at, at times it felt like it was a prank or something at, by how friendly that everybody has been. And I'm not 100 percent sure if it's just because you know. Um, May, uh, maybe I'm in a tourist area and they're trained to be that way. Yeah. But we also went to some smaller towns in Japan that aren't very touristy and just everybody's so, so nice. And, and yeah, like just, you can well, tell that they have a lot of respect for themselves and for where they live and for what they do. And it, it means something special to them to be able to do their things that they do every day. Yeah. Well, and I think if you live in a community where you feel supported, you feel like the community, society, the government at large has my back, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that would make you feel more at peace and you would mm -hmm. be able to overflow more, you know, to mm -hmm. each other. Um, you said something that reminded me years ago when I first started my um, journey to become a, a health and wellness, um, you know, coach. I read an article about this was, and I didn't even consider this. This is when I, when I first started this, I, I didn't give food or culture, you know, the, the, um, importance that I, that I give it now. And I read this article where this woman had done a one year program over in Japan. She's from the United States. And, um, she was in her early 20s when she did this, but her whole life, um, she had had terrible menstrual cramps, terrible menstrual problems. She had had terrible skin issues, had had migraine headaches, and was really kind of afraid to go to a foreign country for a year, knowing that she had all these health concerns. But it was something that was very important to her. I don't remember now what she was training to do, but it was some sort of training and it was something she really wanted to do. And during the time that she was over there, all of her health issues went away, her menstrual problems, her skin issues, her headaches. And when she got back to the States, they all returned. And she was like, oh my God, it's the food. It's what I'm putting in my body. And that was for me, you know, when I first started studying this, I hadn't considered food being that impactful. But you're talking about the fermented foods on your plate, every restaurant you go to, like, how incredible would it be if we all ate fermented foods at every meal? Like, I, right. I can't get my clients, you know, to consider, you know, a, you know, kimchi or, you know, or kefir or any of those types of things. And um, for it to just be part of the culture and what you do, that's awesome. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. So just so many good things. The one thing I'll say that is three weeks of travel is a lot. Yeah, I bet. it's and 
and I knew going into this trip because we consciously made the decision. Usually when I travel, I'm very good about scheduling downtime in and rest time. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, but because Japan's so far away and you know, the opportunity to go doesn't come very often. We made the conscious decision that, Hey, you know what? We're going for it. We're going all in. Uh, we, we're going to be tired at times, but we want to see all these different places. We want to have all these different experiences. So we very consciously made that decision and, and it was rough. I mean, there was, and because of the fact that I was also, you know, working from time to time. So I, I mm. had my computer with me and there were some nights where I had to stay up a little later to do some work. Um, and then the, the jet lag coming back, going there, it wasn't a problem because we timed it up just perfectly, but coming back, uh, the jet lag is rough. And, you know, uh, the past few days I've had to be really, uh, graceful with myself mm-hmm. and, and I didn't, I was very intentionally didn't schedule a lot of things for when I came back because my primary job for this first week is to rest and recover so that we can keep doing all these cool things right. that we're doing. Yeah. Uh, and I just think that's something that, yeah, it's something that I hope other people can take away too, is just, yes, like it's okay to make an intentional decision to say, Hey, I know this probably isn't the best for my health, but it's for a a short period of time. And it's for this reason, right? Like maybe like, you know, there's a line there at some point, right? Right. That that same excuse doesn't work for drugs or whatever, but, um, but you're going on a trip trip or whatever it is. And you know that, Hey, I'm going to be a little tired. This probably isn't the best for me, but this is only for this amount of time. Yeah, absolutely. It's okay to have those moments, right? It's okay to have those fate, like those times in your life where you do that. As long as you schedule the recovery on the back end of that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and and take care of yourself really intentionally. Yeah, and I absolutely. think I'm doing a pretty good job of that. So yeah, good, mm-hmm. good. So exciting! Everybody's yeah. doing unique things. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. And we've got some big things coming up. We've got the podcast is launching in just over uh, what like. A month and a half right now i think so yeah right so there's uh there's some cool things coming yeah and, absolutely and stuff to be really be excited about and i know by the time the people anybody who's listening to this episode by the time you're listening to it we've long since launched the podcast but while we're recording this we're still in the pre-launch phase yeah. um and kind of starting to feel the realness of it um mm-hmm. I'm starting to think of the things that need to be done leading up to the launch to make sure that we're ready to go and, and, and everything, all the assets are there in order for this to become a real thing. But then I'm also thinking about, wow, people are going to be listening to this. Like they're going to get some feedback on it. We're going to have to spark some conversations. Yeah. We're going to get the powerful people community going, um, more consistently. Yeah, Yeah. Right. There's just so many great things that are coming. And I, I realize how important community is to me and how badly, how much, how much I want to have that. Um, and I don't really care how, how it looks or what it is. I just want to be able to connect with people mm-hmm. and support people and feel supported and feel understood mm-hmm. uh, and, and practice those things. And I'm just really excited for that opportunity that we're going to have that's coming up very soon. Yeah. Um, well, and I think and that's I hope something- the people, uh, I hope the people that are listening to this, when we say this community, um, I, I know that a lot of online marketers have kind of um, hurt the idea of what a community is where, you know, people sometimes have this idea of, oh, they want me to join a Facebook group. What are they trying to sell me? Right. And it's like, no, this that's not what this is. This yeah. is something so yeah. different. And that's not to say that we're never going to sell something in there because if we are, it's super aligned with what everybody in there wants. And it's just an offer that we're putting out there. But the point of it is to bring people together and to create this safe space where we can share and connect with each other and also give to each other. Because I think a lot of people desperately want that right now. A lot of people, sure, yeah, we want to get support, but a lot of people desperately want to give love and support. And the opportunities aren't always right there and easy to find. Yeah. When I was a kid, my grandma used to say it's better to give than to receive. And of course, I thought that was ridiculous because there's nothing more fun than (laughs) receiving a gift. Right. But, you know, she's absolutely right there. We have so much in us, you know, and 
to give that it, it just overflows and you're you do you want to give it's just fun it is fun to lift somebody else up you know it is fun to take your candle and light somebody else's candle you know and illuminate one person at a time because a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle you know and i i agree we are we are here we are here in service for sure mm -hmm. you know in love in fellowship and, and community i i definitely think i there's social media everywhere but we want everybody to know this can be a community you know make sure that you reach us through our comments make sure you reach us through our facebook you know powerful people community and let us know what do you need what do you want to hear about and it doesn't have by the way all of us here are integrative nutrition health and wellness coaches and in a nutshell that means anything in your life we'll talk about mm -hmm. and i know we've spent our first few episodes talking about the traditional health and wellness things from diet and exercise and meditation but everything the movies you watch and the the activities that you do and the clothes that you wear and the everything so if there's something fun you guys want to talk about let's talk about it let's make this a community yeah. of sharing and connection yeah For absolutely sure. it's so important mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. yeah and i meet a lot of people um and we're gonna wrap this up soon i'm starting to starting to get dark out i know all of us are ready for yeah. bed um but um i meet a lot of people who are so overfilling with they're, they're so overflowing with what they have to give to this world like they have so much in them that's overflowing out of them but to them it they feel like they're empty right yeah. they feel like they're empty even though they're overflowing and the reason for that is because they're 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 not, they don't exactly have something to overflow that into, to pour that yeah. love and that energy and that intentionality into. And I think a lot of people would feel a whole lot more full if they have this kind of outlet where they can support and, and give and love and listen and understand. Uh, and, and by doing that, and it's easier to do it with strangers for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. It's easier to do it with people who you don't, who's not like right there with you yeah. in your everyday life every day. Yeah. But by doing that with these strangers in this kind of format, this online format, and, and that's not to say that we won't one day have like workshops or events in person Absolutely. and things like that. Yeah. But uh, by, by getting that practice in with these people online who maybe you don't know as closely as your family, you're going to be better equipped to bring that to your family as well, right? You're going to be yeah. much more grounded to listen and connect with your kids or your partner or your colleagues or your brother or sister, whatever it is. Um, yeah, absolutely. And in that light, you know, if there, we've got listeners out there that are like, Hey, I've got something to add. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing this for a long time and my experience was this and I've got something to add to that. We'd love to hear from you. You know, mm -hmm. this isn't all of the, you know, this isn't us being the experts, you know, this is us wanting to create, you know, community. And mm -hmm. so if you've got something to add, if you're like, you know what, they, they, they got most of it right, but they missed the mark on this. And let me tell you why, because mm -hmm. my ex personal experience was different. So all mm -hmm. of it paints a be beautiful picture for everybody. So we want to hear from everybody. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. I love those conversations. I love yeah. when somebody tells me there's something I'm, I, I'm not seeing or, yeah. or not oh, considering too. things like that. It's yeah. 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 You never know who you can learn from. You don't have to be a, a certified integrative nutrition health coach in right. order to know something about health that could really benefit somebody else. Oh, right? yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and we're always learning. I mean, as integrative nutrition health coaches, we are open to what is on the horizon, what's coming in, what is what is new, what is different, mm -hmm. what has been researched. And there's yeah. so much out there. It's just, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's hard in to every, in yeah, in every category of your life, you know, everything, you know, you know, we talk about finances and we talk about joy and we talk about social activities and, you know, you know, make sure that you know that this is so much bigger than just, you know, the traditional idea of what health and wellness is, because wellness is about everything in your life, guys, everything, yeah, not just what you put in your mouth, every thought. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thoughts you have, the experiences you share. 
So this weekend, I know we're going to wrap up this weekend. I was in Southern Illinois taking care of my father, but it also happened to be homecoming weekend for my high school. And so I ran into a lot of my high school friends and even um, high school friends that were a year older than me because my brother uh, was a year younger than me. And it was amazing to me. I'm I'm running around in a pizza joint and I'm running around in a bar. We only have like one bar in my little town. I'm from a tiny little town and everybody, you know, after the ball game, you know, was at one bar and I was, just, everybody was just hugging everybody. We, some of these people we hadn't seen in 30 years, but they're like, Stephanie. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I recognize your face. Tell me your name. And then when they'd say the name, I'd be like, oh my God, you hung out with my little brother all those years. You came to my house when you were 12 years old. And we were just hugging on each other and loving on each other because it was reminding us of this sense of community and connection we had as a child. And I, I, all the, they were basically strangers that I hadn't seen in 30 years. I had more fun reconnecting for a few minutes with those people that have that shared experience, you know? And so even though we're all strangers, don't mean we can't all just reach out and have a shared experience. So just keep that in mind. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Yep. We all get to have our fingerprints all over this. We're all building this together, right? That's what's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Courtney, for being on this episode. And thank you, Tyler. Thank you everybody thank you, for listening you, and being a part of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And we have really exciting things coming and we're getting closer and closer to the launch. And by the way, I threw out a fact yesterday that only 1% of podcasters complete 20 episodes. So Ooh. of all the podcasts that exist in the world, all the people that have ever started a podcast, only 1% actually get through 20 episodes. This is episode 13. So I think I want to do like in the lead up to uh, episode number 20, let's keep reminding ourselves of that. And then let's do a celebration. Episode 20 is going to be a celebration of us entering the 1%. And, And I hope that this inspires more people to pursue those things in their lives because it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Yeah. It's just a matter of being consistent and inviting people in on what you want to do in your life. Yeah. And I think the more you invite people into what you want to do, uh, the more accountability there is and the more likely you are to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Wonderful. For awesome. sure. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, join us in the Powerful People community. Uh, like, subscribe, download your favorite episodes, share it with your friend, leave us a review if you uh, want to leave a five-star review. <laughs> and uh, and we're here for you. We're we're yeah. excited to be here. And give us your you. feedback. We're always you know, we want to we want to get better. So give us yep. your feedback. Absolutely. We want to hear from you. So exactly. Yeah. All right. Good night, 100%. everybody. Mm-hmm. Good night. Thanks everyone for listening and we will uh, see you next time. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.